good morning and welcome back i am just checking in real quick before i start packing up this is the last week in nashville i just wanted my last week to be very simple and enjoyable so love you thank you for coming along on this journey with me um if you're new here welcome love you so much Tuesday morning I have zero plans I thought I was gonna drive to Atlanta but I just don't feel like it yeah just gonna finish tidying up the apartment packing the last couple things I actually am so ahead of the game it's really nice yeah just gonna take it easy breezy it's kind of gloomy outside which I love it's supposed to rain in a little bit yeah might go grab some breakfast or some snacks somewhere but that is literally my only plan I've gotten so much done off my checklist that I'm pretty caught up actually. Update, I'm going to try to go to Loveless Cafe. I've never been. Being that I'm working on like a Nashville must-haves vlog. I don't wanna say vlog, it's probably the little video. I think I might throw that in there if it is as good as everyone says it is. So yeah, I'm gonna try to go get some biscuits. Obviously I'm bringing you along. All right, so I booked for 10 a.m. Here we go. Starting in 1951, Lon and Annie Loveless, with the intention to serve Southern staples like fried chicken and biscuits to hungry travelers along Highway 100, converted their home into a restaurant and built a 14-room motel for overnight guests. For more than 70 years, the Loveless Cafe has been offering families and friends a place where they can enjoy a scratch-made Southern meal. Earning high praise from USA Today, Southern Living, Taste of the South, and more, you can see by the bevy of autographs that both locals and celebrities alike love this place. I'll admit I'm a bit of a skeptic, and when I heard these were the best biscuits in town, I had to try them, but they were the best biscuits I've ever had in my life. For breakfast, I took the waitress's suggestion and I ordered the pulled pork omelet, which was full of pulled pork, cheese, and onions, and served with a hash brown casserole. Over the years, the Loveless property has grown, including some shops full of signature gifts and two event spaces, the barn and the Harpeth room. I definitely recommend you stopping in to the Hams and Jams Country Market. This place really put Cracker Barrel to shame because it's highly curated. You can get the same items that you can in Loveless Cafe that are frozen, as well as their jams and some coffee to go. We're back from a beautiful breakfast. Loveless Cafe was everything people say it is. It was so homey and the little compound that they have is so well done that like they have like a little shop and they have an event center and then they have the actual cafe. The biscuits are every bit worth the hype. I generally think that like tourist traps never live up to like the word, but those, my goodness, and the jam, my gosh. I was really grateful because I asked for like a box for my life. Like one biscuit left and the, and the strawberry jam was my favorite. So I was like, can I just get a little box for this? And then she brought me more biscuits, which that's good service right there. So I have some biscuits for later. On the way back, I had a 
a couple of vouchers for McKay's left that I hadn't used and I think I've gotten almost all of my checklist done at this point because that was one of the few things I was like oh I'm gonna have time to go to McKay's one last time I had like 10 bucks to spend so I went by some grace of God I found the exact book I was looking for and technically with my little vouchers it was free so I did get two other books in addition to that so the one that I've been looking for for a bit has been Love Light Farms so I bought um I found In the Weeds from BK Borison there and I thought it was gonna be like a story about falling in love in the restaurant industry but it was really about a farm and then I found out that the first of the series is technically this one, Love Light Farms. So I kind of wanted to read the rest of them. I found this book, Truly Madly Deeply. Let me take the little stickies off. Truly Madly Deeply was another one. And then I also picked up Flawless by Elsie Silver. So one of the books I kept having to look up was Reckless, which I have. I haven't finished it yet. Mostly because I did want to read the other ones from this series. So I'm glad I found that. So yeah, this is my little haul. I think I only had to come out of pocket $16, which is great because yeah, that's like the price of like one of these books. What a great little day really excited about this so i think i'm just gonna make a little cup of tea and settle in and just ignore social and all the things and just read for a little bit that sounds like a good day right <laughs> Um, the beginning of that book starts with her walking in on her boyfriend cheating on her um, and it, I guess like he must have been getting his dick sucked and then his excuse to it was that he was helping this girl with like her vocal cords <laughs> like it was like a music thing there is a, a reel I saw recently where it was like if you cheat on me you better be good at it because you're gonna have to cheat death as well that's all I have to say. If a man had the balls to tell me, I'm just like literally dick out. I'm just helping her work on her vocal cords. Your dick would be out the window. Good night, see. Now it's time to head to the movies with our cinematic crusader. Here with another titanium take, here's our movie Maven Kai. Happy Pride everybody! It is I, your movie Maven Kai, and I am here to tell you happy June, happy Men's Mental Health Awareness Month, happy, I think it's Children of Military Families Month, might be October, I don't remember, um, but it's definitely, definitely Pride, and that means that we need to make sure that we are loving each other, we are loving ourselves, and that we are as loud and proud as we are comfortable being, and we respect how loud and proud everyone else needs to be. Okay, um, it's really important when we're talking about pride um, that we are very self-aware, but we're also aware of everybody else in our lives because there's a lot of people who are out to themselves. They're out to their close, you know, friends and family, um, but they might not be out to the world for whatever reason, whether it's they don't feel comfortable, whether they know that the environment they're in isn't safe. Um, so when we're talking about pride and we're including people in that, we need to be very careful and aware of how we talk about it. Um, so, you know, toot your own horn, wave your own flag, and make sure that anybody else that you're including in your pride celebration is willing to be there. Consent is sexy, just remember that. Um, for Pride Month, I wanted to make sure that we talked about some really awesome movies that um, shaped my generation, I'm a millennial. Um, and the first one being the Birdcage. And I feel like this was one of those movies that was so ahead of its time and so gentle in, you know, those moments that it needed to be and very abrupt in those moments that it needed to be. It came out in 1996. So you have to remember this was, you know, the time when like Will and Grace was really starting to come out. Um, and uh, Ellen had just come out. And, you know, we were living in a world where we were only really comfortable with gayness and its tropes. We were only only comfortable with gayness when it was, you know, something that we could look at and, you know, kind of smile and laugh and then pass off, 
you know, to something else. Um, it, it kept its distance. The birdcage really brought it home because it was, it, well, if you haven't seen it, it's Rob Williams and Nathan Lane um, playing a, a gay couple. Nathan Lane is a drag performer and Rob Williams plays the club owner. And so um, they have a son together and uh, he decides he wants to get married. Well, the girl he's gonna marry, played by Calista Flockhart, um, her parents are staunch Republicans from the East Coast. And it's Gene Hackman and Diane Weiss who are absolutely brilliant <clears throat> in these roles because they play them so genuinely. They play them so well that you, you, you're aware of <clears throat> the cluelessness, you know, really, that kind of comes along with a lot of the things that they have to say in a lot of the opinions. Um, so they're all supposed to meet for dinner. They don't know that, that, uh, Robin and Nathan are a gay couple that, you know, the son's parents are a gay couple. Um, so Robin asks his real mom, Hey, can you, you know, come play house for the night? And she says, sure. She gets hung up and can't make it. And so Nathan Lane steps in, uh, as the mom, uh, and it's hilarious, but it's, it's so, um, it's so heartfelt and it's so wonderful to see, you know, this couple wanting to do the best thing for their child, but also do the best thing for each other and to want to be themselves and authentic. And, you know, they are so loving and so caring and, you know, <clears throat> having that portrayed um, in the age of, you know, the return to family values was necessary, I feel like, um, for, you know, when 2008 came along and we had, you know, people basically making choices for other people saying, you know, no, you can't get married and you can't have the relationship that you want and you, you know, trying to pass all of that. And that was a, that was a really difficult time for a lot of people who <clears throat> very much wanted to have a family and very much wanted to feel that love and very much wanted to be able to show that love without um, feeling discriminated against, without feeling that level of hate and those, you know, those heavy, you know, gazes and everything. So um, I feel like The Birdcage was a really great movie to, you know, kind of raise those talking points and raise those, um, those conversations you know, um, it's always easier to have a conversation about something difficult when there's humor put behind it. And really, if you want two people to inject humor in something that's going to be incredibly uncomfortable, Nathan Lane and Robin Williams are definitely the people, you know, to do it. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, um, Robin Williams ended up getting a lot of uh, flack for this, you know, even a decade or two later because they said, well, why didn't they just have, you know, a, a gay person playing this role? And you know, he stepped forward and said, you know, there might've been, you know, um, somebody more fit for the role, um, you know, culturally and, and, you know, to be more true to the role, but it was very important for him to play it because he knew people exactly like this, that his character was based on those people that he knew that were fighting so hard. And he knew that, um, with his name attached, there were people that were more likely to come and see it um and get those messages than if it were you know um a gay person as a headliner um and even at this point nathan lane wasn't out so it that's exactly what i'm talking about you have to know because people were asking robin like you know well what's it like you know with nathan lane and you know is he really gay and you guys play these roles so well um he wasn't out and, and robin didn't out him and that's you know that's being a good ally that's what we mean when we say be a good ally um, so yes, Birdcage, if you've not seen it, you need to do, go turn this off and go watch the Birdcage. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so funny and beautiful and warm and it'll give you, you know, little teary eyes in certain places. Um, and I, it's a movie that I've seen probably close to 200 times and it's still every time just gives you that warm and fuzzy. So, um, love everybody around you. There's no reason not to. Um, I take that back. Some people do give you a reason not to love them, um, but you can still show them love as a human and show them that that's possible um, without uh, putting yourself at risk, you know, to, to be disrespected. So love yourself first, love other people. This has just become a rant and I'm kind of okay with that because it's pride. And <laughs> the more that we say love and the more that we insist on love and the more that we um, show love, the more it comes back to us. So 
get out there and show some love, guys. Drink your water. Take your meds. We'll see you next time. Happy Pride. Good morning. It is Friday, now nine o'clock, and at 10 o'clock, they're gonna have like bagels down at the leasing office. So I'm just kind of biding time till then. I'm gonna do some dishes. So it's Friday. Movers come on Tuesday. Pod um, was confirmed yesterday. I wanna say I'll double check that right now. I had gone down to Atlanta on Wednesday. And then I spent the night, you know, I brought some more things over. It was really great. So yeah, um, we're all set for the drop off of my pod on the 10th. So today on my agenda is dishes. Gotta do some last minute cleaning around the apartment. I need to do an everything shower at some point. I wanna go to Red Perch and then I have some laundry I have to do, so. All right, friends, we are suited up for the last clean of this apartment. I'm excited to do this final deep clean. Listen to a little Morgan, but uh, we've got like half an hour until bagels at the leasing office, so. to the leasing office to get my rent's worth, which is, I think today is a bagel or a donut. And yeah, I've got towels working. I've got some dishes going. So I've earned my little snack. So I'm gonna go down there. Hopefully I don't have to interact with too many community people. And uh, on to the next. the other day there's a lot of babies down there today These from Sprouts one last time before I moved. Good morning, it is Saturday. I have so many fun things on the books today. So very excited, woke up, played a little Disney Dream at Valley, drinking a little coffee. The plan is Bad Luck Burger Club. Say goodbye to some of my friends. Um, eat up amazing smash burger, best smash burger in town. No notes. And um, then I decided because there's kind of a hang time between that and my hair appointment, I'm gonna try to go to a shop of things and or another couple places in East Nashville that I would never go otherwise. So yeah. Um, excited. Thank you so much for spending my last week in Nashville with me. It has been such an amazing time to live here and I feel so grateful for all the people that I've met, all the food that I ate, you know, the things that I've seen. Uh, definitely had some career highs here and, you know, I'll definitely have some, like I said, like a reflection video at some point, but, um, it was really nice. Even though I did jump to Atlanta for a couple days, um, it's been really nice to have a great last week here. So yeah, let's do it.
It's like I've had this whole stressor of like, oh, I'm not gonna have my bed for a week, but it's like, but you haven't been sleeping very well anyway, so what's what's the difference? But these are not extensions, this is all me. We only have a couple, probably what, one or two more videos sat in this little space here, and then you'll have a new background to look at, so. Is this a cowlick? Is that what that's called? And, wow, my voice sounds like shit. Um, say so ugh. I don't know if this helps or hurts some days <laughs> anyways it's getting to the end of it all right thank you to anyone that's been part of this natural journey it has been wonderful and I'm very grateful and it has changed my life so much and I do think for the better so excited to see what this next chapter brings so love you so much excited to bring you along with me